Hey collectors, welcome to Star Wars Collected. I'm Jonathan. First things first, I need to give a huge thank you to each and every one of my subscribers. We just hit 1,000 subscribers. That was what I thought was a very lofty goal for my, the first year anniversary of my channel, which would be May 4th of this year, uh, and to hit that in early January. Just means the world to me. I love uh, interacting with you guys down in the comments. I love interacting with you guys on Instagram. I'm constantly chatting with uh, all of you guys uh, and posting stuff and, and things of that nature. So make sure you check me out there if you haven't. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, Now's a great time to get on board. The channel is growing very quickly, which I love. Uh, and uh, I just can't wait to see where we are by the uh, one year anniversary. Maybe, maybe 2,000 subscribers, that'd be great. But today, what we have for you is the Book of Boba Fett helmet. Uh, actually, the Mandalorian Season 2 Boba Fett helmet. Um, it's a little weird that they made this and not the Book of Boba Fett helmet. There are a couple differences, but today we're gonna go ahead and unbox this. This took a long time to get here. We're gonna go ahead and unbox this. We're gonna compare it to the other uh, Mandalorian helmets that I have in my collection and see where there are differences and where they are the same. Let's get this guy out of here. Now, Boba Fett himself took a while to get back to live action. You know, we've, we've heard of all the rumors over the years that there was gonna be uh, a movie, um, you know, with the guy who did Fantastic Four. And when that did really poorly, they kind of pulled the plug on that. There were rumors that James Mangold uh, of the Wolverines was going to do one, uh, which turned out to probably not be uh, correct from what we've heard. Um, but uh, it's, it's taken him a while to get back and, and now he's back. Let's take a look here. So it says uh, Boba Fett rearmored on here. So it has a much more complete paint job than the version that we see in Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi. Uh, it has sort of, you know, the, the box here has that notch that we're getting used to with a little panel that shows the character on it. Um, it sort of has that irregular shape to it. I think it's kind of a cool box shape. Uh, I look at the ones that I have that are older than that. This just gives a little bit more personality. I wonder how limiting that is at times. So you get a little bit of a preview. Uh, here's the outside of the box. And then you can see like a little bit of almost like an x-ray vision. These are little pads that are inside of the helmet. Um, as well as some little control panels and things of that nature. I think this is supposed to be kind of like a little speaker or microphone grill or something of that nature. Just like the other ones before it, it's gonna have a, a lighting option, as well as you can remove the top of the range finder to be able to see through it. I don't tend to put batteries in mine uh, because I don't plan on wearing them uh, and I don't want them to you know, degrade while they're in there. So we'll go ahead and break the tape on here. Watching Book of Boba Fett has really made me interested in building a full-size Boba Fett recently. So uh, we'll see if that comes to fruition or not. I know that's a fairly expensive and complex uh, costume to make. Okay, so a piece of cardboard just fell out, no big deal. Uh, this piece also, this is hinged. And uh, inside here is the helmet. And we've got this, uh, little cardboard triangles on either corner. There is here a little owner's manual type thing, which will show us where to put the batteries in, some of the features, things of that nature. Uh, batteries on the Boba Fett helmet go into the side. Um, and then the range finder clicks in. There's an adjustable helmet hard hat type system inside as well. And it's showing you that the uh, you know, side piece uh, folds down with a click of a button. Pretty obvious stuff, although I can see where trying to figure out where the batteries go could take a pause. I feel like each time I get a helmet, it's wrapped a little differently. So I might just turn the whole thing upside down and let it all come out. How about that? I know that Hasbro is moving to remove plastic uh, as much as possible from their packaging. So that is good to see. Cut the tape to get it out of here. These are much more secure than they used to be. Uh, it used to sort of just be rolling around. Actually, it turns out that those pieces were just for the range finder at the bottom. The helmet itself was just sort of wedged in there and taped in there. Looking at mine here, I actually see right off the bat there are sort of two little like dots here, which kind of look like remnants from the injection molding process or something like that. I'm not a, not a huge fan of those two little dots. Um, and as we work our way around the helmet, uh, first of all, it's pretty obvious that this is once again the same piece uh, they've been using before. You can definitely see it in here. Now, here it makes sense. Uh, on the prototype one, it didn't really make sense because the prototype one was sort of the super 
commando stormtrooper concept that they were exploring at the time, uh, which means it should have been more like a stormtrooper, which is super glossy and refined and things of that nature. So I wish they had fixed it for that. Uh, of course, we've got our dent here as well. And then here's all of our internals of the helmet. Uh, I was just chatting with a friend on Instagram uh, and we were talking about some of the Black Series helmets and how they've gotten a little bit more expensive. Uh, but if I think back to the Kylo Ren helmet, it had nothing inside of it like this. Uh, so while they've gotten a little bit more expensive, I feel like they have gotten nicer and more complex. Um, that Kylo Ren helmet, the original one, you know, had, it was a two piece helmet with a big panel thing. And it just, you know, it, it was, it was good. It was great for the money. They go for a huge plus on, uh, on eBay and second market, but could, they could have been better. If they were doing it again now, um, with, as the line has matured, my guess is they would have done a better job. Okay. Uh, so range finder here, this will click into the side here when we're ready. This is the little panel that comes off, slides out, and then you're able to uh, see through it, if you will. And if we were putting batteries into the side, then uh, this would also light up when you do it. Uh, trigger button here on the side, which allows me to adjust whether it's up or whether it's down. Put it up for now. And we'll go ahead and snap this onto the side. When I got the Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett helmet. Uh, I was very excited because I had, had one before. It had been painted by someone else uh, and it was okay, um, but it just wasn't perfect. Um, and I thought the Black Series one would be a, uh, an upgrade. Um, when I got it though, it was uh, more gray in the paint color than I expected. Um, and I didn't, I didn't love it for that reason. I ended up getting the FX helmet uh, instead, which I thought the color on that was better. Now, in my mind, this green is closer to what I would expect the Empire Strikes Back version to be. Uh, it is more of an olive color. It's a little bit lighter. What's interesting then to me further is that when I think about the you know re-armored Boba Fett in Mandalorian season two, I picture this helmet being darker than what they've done it here, uh, as well as this one has you know a decent amount of sort of like this this muddiness here on the front. Uh, it does have a lot of marks, which I think is which is okay. Um, you know, my impression was in season two, Book of Boba Fett uh, of uh, Mandalorian is that he, you know, took his current helmet, repainted it. Didn't necessarily like go in and, you know, hammer out dents and things like that, but just gave it a, a fresh coat of paint after it had gotten so uh, broken down and acidic from being in the Sarlacc pit and Cobb Vanth having it. So uh, it's kind of interesting. In some ways, I feel like these colors are more the Empire Strikes Back colors. Uh, this red may be a little, little more poppy than what I would think for Empire Strikes Back. Um, and I would have expected this piece to be a darker green. That's just how I saw it in um, Mandalorian season two. And when I think of the hot toys and things of that nature, they seem to me to be a kind of a darker green than what this is. Once again, we've got this button on the side, clicking that drops it down. Uh, I wish it didn't bounce. This one doesn't seem to bounce quite as much as my other one, but it sort of has this, you know, this boing uh, effect to it. Uh, not quite as badass as uh, what Boba Fett probably wants to come across as. Um, but in general, you know, it's a good looking helmet. They've gotten, you know, the, the, the paint as far as, you know, this green is different than this green and this color is different than all of them. Um, you know, decent amount of detailing here and there. I always feel like these, uh, you know, for the average person, these are fantastic, such a great value. And, uh, you know, for collectors uh, like myself and probably you, if you're watching this, uh, these are such a good base to uh, take these and then, you know, go in and maybe add your own little silver bits of paint here and there to just sort of make it a little bit nicer. This is something different on the back here. I don't recall there being a black stripe on the other ones. So I'd be interested to know a little bit more about where that came from and what the deal is with that. But yeah, overall, another good Black Series helmet from the Mandalorian. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my other Boba Fett helmets, Mandalorian helmets, and we'll get them all out together and we'll just sort of talk about how they're the same and how they differ. Okay, collectors, here we are. These are all of my Mandalorian helmets. Uh, they are almost all Black Series helmets with the exception of this one being the EFX version. Uh, this, of course, is a, kind of the Empire Strikes Back version. The Mandalorian helmet from the Mandalorian Din Djarin's. This one, of course, is the most unique and different. I actually don't think it shares any common parts or molds or anything like that with these other ones uh, because as I'm looking at it, there really is nothing that's shared. Um, we have our Death Watch one here, and this is our, you know, prototype, Super Commando type thing for Boba Fett. And this is our uh, one we've been talking about. So this is the season two of the Mandalorian re-armored 
Boba Fett helmet. So uh, as we kind of you know, put them here, you can see how much more all of this one is and how much more gray this one is. Um, when I put this guy over here, you can see that the colors of these two, I think, uh, look much more similar. Um, I was wondering earlier whether the dent was in the prototype one. It isn't. So these two are sharing uh, probably the exact same mold where uh, these two are also sharing the exact same mold. I'm trying to find nicks that are in both of them and they are in the same spot. So they are identical. Um, the striping on the side here is actually quite a bit different on this one versus this one. So there are uh, more of these, that little black one in the back too. Uh, they're also considerably smaller than what they painted on the Empire Strikes Back version. Um, and they also go, I would say, further up, maybe maybe one more further up, but also much more defined on this version. This is sort of somewhat of a, a murky print. Um, you know, it's meant to look a little more aged, but it is slightly kind of murky on there. Uh, the detailing overall, as far as the paint on this, is of course much more elaborate than what you have on this one. Uh, but the sort of uh, earth weathering that's on this is also uh, more than what you have on here. So a little bit dirtier, a little bit muckier on this one. Uh, this one obviously a lot more battle damage. It's a fantastic line and I'm really excited about Black Sears. I can't wait to add Bo-Katan to this stuff as well um, and have a female Mandalorian here. I do have a Sabine Wren that I did not bring over. Uh, it's sort of a little bit outside of what we're talking about here, but I love myself some Sabine Wren as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, this sort of in-depth look at all the different Black Series helmets, Mandalorian helmets, as well as my EFX guy over here and sort of why I decided to, to make the investment in the EFX helmet. Overall, again, fantastic helmets, great value. If you've seen these and you're interested in them, I would pull the trigger on them. I think they've been a great addition to my collection. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you like videos like this, please consider subscribing and joining the group here. Uh, we have new videos here all the time and uh, I love connecting with you guys. So hop down in the comments, let me know what helmet you'd like to see next from the Black Series. Uh, my bet's on a clone trooper helmet, uh, but I am, like I said, very excited to see Bo-Katan. So we'll see you guys later.